went to Chinatown. There were too many bright lights. Ask them to dim some. <laughs> I thought I'd start with a haiku. <laughs> Hello, I'm Harry, and it's nice to be back. Um, I'm about to finish my degree at the University of Bristol, and so I'd like to share a couple of poems from that time. This first one is called How I Fell in Love at Freshers Fair. And I'd like to dedicate it to the genius in Bristol who opened a late night kebab van and called it Jason Donner Van. <laughs> we locked eyes from across the room. Her smile drew me in like the smell of Jason Donner Van on a Saturday night. I walk over before I realize what I'm doing. Heart dancing awkwardly like Jason Donovan on a Saturday night. They called her Bex. Breathtaking Bex. Brilliant Bex. One look, I'm already erect on my neck. The hairs. It's poetic. That's right, Bex. Beautiful Bex. Brilliant Bex. One look, and I'm thinking of section. One point I want to set a theory that states at this stage we can't really define what a set is. But even a naive understanding of a selection of elements leads to various paradoxes, like the set of all sets couldn't really be a set, otherwise it would have to include itself. And if I said she had the beauty of all the women in the world, it would lead to a similar contradiction, but if she was a set, she would be fine, night. <laughs> Bex. She puts bubbles in my stomach like Bex. <laughs> Bex. We all agree that she's attractive like Bex. I want her. Send her a text that ends in an X, maybe even a smiley face so I could pretend I was fun. And as her lips begin to part, like crowded lifts with stinky farts, <laughs> she asks, have you ever considered pole dancing? I tell her, not really. I'm not really that bloke. She said, girls, love it when guys come along. I ask if that's a joke. Surely any guy that goes to pole sock must be a pervert. A confused Eastern European, <laughs> or both. <laughs> she maintains it's a great way to stay in shape. And there's a free taster session where you can discover your potential. In my head, I'm thinking less LA fitness, more LA confidential, by which I mean the scummy gentleman's club in Ealing, not the 1997 Kevin Spacey crime thriller. <laughs> Either way, I say I do not think I have the arm strength. At which point a mate chimes in, show him your arms, Bex. Now imagine Popeye on steroids, seen through a fisheye lens, but beautiful. And it's the first week of times who did not have many friends. Well, it's the first week of times who did not have any friends. <laughs> so it's nice that there's someone that wants to talk to me, especially when she's pretty. So I carry on this conversation, even though I'm iffy for every perfectly reasonable question, there is an equally reasonable answer. Regardless of the fact to be the world's worst pole dancer, I ask her if she'll be there. And this is what she said. I can give you your own personal lesson. Obviously, I play it cool like I see what my friends are doing, but I am definitely at this taster session. <laughs> if only someone reunited with Bex. Oh, Bex. Bewitching Bex, beguiling Bex, as if expected what happened next. A D, Bex. There are 50 people at this taster session. And I didn't really have to be a week into my math degree to work out, I was the only boy. <laughs> and despite all those flirtatious lies Bex has said to me, that's precisely the way it's meant to be, because after the third time, the instructor dresses everyone as ladies, followed by an apologetic smile in my direction. I realize I'm about to spend the next 55 minutes trying to hide my embarrassment. <laughs> Not only do I stand out because of my standout Adam's apple, I am also noticeably terrible, which can't be helped by the fact that my palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There are friction burns on my calves already, I'm nervous. But on the surface, I look calm and ready to pole dance. But I keep on forgetting that I can't. <laughs> so once again, I jump and swing a knee, slam into laminate flooring, causing even more bruising of my ego and knees. 
that makes the way over for that lesson she promised me. And whilst I still very much appreciate her company, her comments of, I can't believe you actually came, do little to encourage me. <laughs> and as the postdoc social sec announces the end of the session, he breathed, I have left was an almighty sigh of relief. And any dreams or delusions that haven't been crushed yet are soon to be expelled to similarly gritted tea, she says. We've got a couple of socials coming up. Next week, there's a joint pub crawl with the American football team. The next month is the annual postdoc photo calendar shoot. And as she hands out last year's calendars of sexy girls in lingerie, I share a look with Bex that says everything I want to say because my mom brought me up believing in equality of gender. And as much as I would love for this face to represent November, <laughs> it's not quite worth a 15 pound registration fee. <laughs> even if it does come with a free pair of hot pants. <laughs> so as I make my way to a free meal, put on by the Christian Union, show them my hairless sections of the leg and tell them that pole fitness is a legitimate form of exercise, and it's difficult, I tell myself I need to start learning to say no to stuff, or at least bring a friend with me next year. Cheers. Um, I grew up in London. And one of the best things about growing up in London is whenever you go anywhere else, it seems very friendly. Um, <laughs> and Bristol was no exception. Uh, and the other thing about Bristol in comparison with London is that it was relatively close to the beach. Uh, it just happens that the beach it was relatively close to was Western Supermare. <laughs> These people have been to Western Supermare. <laughs> Uh, but kind of term started in September, October. Um, you know, I was really excited, but thought we should probably wait till the appropriate time. So this is a poem about what happened when we did go, and it's called Western Super Nightmare. <laughs> Picture the scene. A group of giggling teens. To on the left and the right, you're in a middle with me, riddled with glee. So excited, you're worried that the piddle will be trickling free, warming up that back bit of your knee, but you hold out. Now very aware that it is cold out. And wearing just swimming trucks, flip-flops, and a t-shirt feels bold now. It looked a lot warmer out the window. <laughs> but when you're inside, it's difficult to know how the wind blows. And right now, there's many hurricanes around my shin, so this was the plan. Go in, arms out, maybe get a bit of a tan, and then race across the glistening sand, flip-flops in hand, and swim about. Bring a towel, be in and out by sunset. Then, while it's hot, start drying off, let everything get unwet and re-warm. But that ain't how it goes, and so you wish you could have been pre-warned that it's the 25th of February. <laughs> and just because it's the first day the sun has properly come out in ages, I don't change the fact that it's technically winter. And it's a lot colder than you thought. And even with that towel around your shoulders for support and that spare pair of trousers that are now over your shorts, you just arrived and you're already wearing all the clothes you brought and you were still cold. You realize sometimes we do things that are stupid just so we don't feel old. I'm 20 in a couple of weeks. And to remedy this, everybody's come to the beach. There's Vanessa, Rebecca, Mandala, McGregor, Susie, Sue, James, and us. And whatever the weather, we're in it together, so why bother making a fuss? Western Supermare, AKA Western Super Mud. My foot hits the ground with a less than super thud, more of a squelch, if I'm honest. But I honestly don't care a bit. I'm knee deep in feces and very much aware of it, but I'm the type of guy that likes to see the sights. So as we're B-side, the C-side, me and Mandy D-side, we won't leave till we've tried the ocean. Stop motion. Snapshot of us, mouths open. Desperately trying not to swallow mud. Not quite full hippopotamus, but there are bits of sludge going in and around a lot of us. No concept of worrying about tomorrow, just wallowing in what's left of today, because today is potentially adventure -y. And 100% of me fundamentally believes the fun is meant to be done inventively and whenever and wherever possible. Now, that doesn't mean drunken teens vomiting up and screaming, YOLO! That's as a kid thinking, how laxative exactly is a pack of polos? <laughs> and actually having the audacity to find out, <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> it's carefully considering the current consequences and coming to the conclusion of, why not? 
Maybe that's why I almost joined pole dancing society at uni, or decided to try rapping for my German speaking presentation, or ended up stripping for my German speaking presentation, <laughs> or was one mark off a first for my German speaking presentation, <laughs> or emerging from the sea freezing cold and nearly naked, a little part of me cannot help but feeling amazing, even if by this point, one of my flip flops has slipped off. Tracky bottoms got so sold and they had to be ripped off. T-shirt and towel were teasing the tide and ended up a bit got. So now I'm just in muddy trunks and fiending for a chip shop. But the guardian of the pier is there to make sure I stay put. He says, you cannot come in here or you might get splinters in your fur. <laughs> now, in a West Country accent, you can say anything. It's very difficult to sound menacing. <laughs> But I realize at this point, This place ain't quite what I thought. And there is something inherently creepy about a seaside resort at nighttime in the middle of winter. So I think it might be time to go home. But the next train isn't for three hours. And by that point, I would definitely be dead. <laughs> so instead, I valiantly vowed to continue with my quest. Some people want to get rich, some want to get famous. I just want to get dressed. And after getting kicked out of New Look, which was probably for the best, I'd like to stress, other than death, I only had one option left, and usually my innate fashion sense, powerful street cred, or inspirational moral fiber might prevent what happened next, but these are running low, and everywhere is closed, so... Let's all go to Tesco, where Harry buys his best clothes, la 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 la. Na, 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 na. They sell dressing gowns and flip flops. I'm desperately in need of la la na, na. Uh, Every little helps. <laughs> I love the beach. And I love swimming in the sea. I love having adventures because I love feeling free. I love people who are up for stuff and spontaneity. The truth is, I love life. And I love people who love life like me. Sometimes it's for the glory. Sometimes it's for the story. Mostly it's because I believe we weren't made to be ordinary. Because at the end of the day, what's done is done. And nothing beats fun because fun is fun and stuff is approximately 40% more fun in a dressing gown. <laughs> Especially if you're naked underneath. <laughs> Imagine the fun that you're having and then adding the feeling of fleece. Combine that with a cool breeze and the fact I love feeling free. <laughs> it is having the audacity to find out quite a lot. It is carefully considering the current consequences and coming to the conclusion of, why not?